What's up, people? Welcome to the Naked Ego Podcast. Uh, my name is Cassandra Bill. I'm your host. And uh, Edgar Diambu, your co-host. Yes. Uh, this is a platform where men and women are willing to strip down their ego and be authentic and vulnerable while they share their stories. Mm-hmm. Today, we're going to talk about um, trauma. And healing. And healing. And when you talk about trauma and healing, there is no better person to talk about trauma and healing than Daisy Hainde. Mm-hmm. How are you? I'm very fine. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. How are you feeling? Very good. This is the Naked <laughs> Ego podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, feel at home, feel relaxed. Yes. You know, yeah. Uh, mm. But yeah, tell us a little bit more and about yourself. And also have fun while at it. Yes, mm-hmm. have fun, have fun, have fun. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Daisy, introduce yourself. When you said feel at home, feel relaxed, it felt so therapeutic. Uh-huh. Yeah. Came, <laughs> there you go. Because I keep telling my clients, yeah. um, feel feel at home. Yeah. I'm here for you. There you go. Yeah. So I'm um, Daisy uh-huh. Haindi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, proudly Luya. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Producer, do you have that uh, celebration thing? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm a psychologist. I'm a holistic therapist. Mm-hmm. Um, by holistic, I mean uh, I've not specialized. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Cool. So I'm the lead counselor, Convocare Kenya, mm-hmm. um, a therapy organization mm-hmm. that helps to make therapy affordable, mm-hmm. accessible, and available. Uh, talking about affordable, accessible, and available. Um, I think the biggest concern, especially when it comes to men, is people. Uh, we men, we really struggle to to understand, not to understand, to to put the money value of just going to sit in front of somebody mm-hmm. and talk to them and give them money. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so now, when you talk about affordable, your mm-hmm. rates begin from uh, what figure? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, I'd rather not state, okay. Um, okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. <laughs> but fine. it's actually affordable. Uh, I would say right now we are running an initiative mm-hmm. that is uh, by the name Friends of Convocare, yeah. where people give in um, for, to pay for therapy for others. So for instance, oh. you could um, contribute monthly and help someone else who wants to be on therapy and Yo. cannot afford that's that's that's, that's so my idea nice. that's mm-hmm. my idea. that's the idea i had for the naked ego podcast because the mm-hmm. podcast tackles a lot about struggles and issues around men yeah mm-hmm. and then my idea was how can i find somebody who can sponsor the show or the podcast mm-hmm. so that that money can be channeled somewhere Mm. And then for those listeners or viewers who are listening and they feel like they need to go for therapy, yeah. mm-hmm. they go for therapy uh, using a code from the podcast without paying. Mm. Hope we can work on something and uh, tailor something together. No, we'll yes. get there. We'll get yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Yes, but that, that yeah. has always been my goal because uh-huh. I feel like uh, only men who've gone to therapy can convince men who haven't gone to therapy to go to therapy. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. true. Ah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I find myself in that situation a e- lot. Exactly. Uh, because yeah. I've gone and because I talk about it on social media. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, it has invited more people to say, okay, yeah, I've been running away from this. I've been yes. restrained. I mean, I've been resisting it. But now mm. this guy has talked about it so much. Yes. You know what? Give me a plug of where I can go yes. and seek therapy. Mm. But that's a very good initiative you guys have. Mm. Um, I'm having guys contribute in like a kitty yeah. mm. that will help another person who can't afford it but yeah. wants to access it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So, um, how does your, how is, the, how is the therapy, how is the accessibility of the therapy structured? So accessibility in terms of online, we are available uh-huh. online mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. and uh, even on call. Uh-huh. So you can call us and have someone who can talk to you. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's, so, that's so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you, you can see I don't have this part of my leg, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. <laughs> I lost my leg in 2015. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, 2016, I, I went through depression. Mm-hmm. And uh, at that time, I really looked and searched for an online platform that mm. I could reach out in terms of therapy in Kenya, I couldn't find. Mm. I had to go all the way to UK. Mm. Yes, to reach and oh, for an oh, do all online session. Mm. So you guys uh, going online is such a big yeah, that's mm. a big thing. Toll free, yes. yes. 
Yeah, toll free. Toll free. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So we're here to talk about trauma, trauma and healing. healing. But yeah. we have to tackle trauma first before we get to the healing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, yes. um, in your professional mm. view, what would you think? Or no, what would you say is the def- definition of trauma? Mm-hmm. No, before she, before she defines what trauma is, uh-huh. mm-hmm. what does trauma? F- what is trauma to you? You don't I'd, need to define I'd it. Like how stressful. how does it feel and test and look like to you? A distressing episode. Ah, a, distre- a distressing, an experience that just causes a lot of distress, yeah. and um, it's distress that affects literally your mind, your body, your soul. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. Um, and. It it's in a, in layman's term, it's an experience that just shakes it shakes you to your wits. Mm. Mm. Yeah, um, that's that's probably how I'd I'd describe it. And it and sort of the, the aftermath of that, it could be one experience, it mm-hmm. could be several yeah. uh, experiences, or could be the same experience being repeated, mm. um, causing this you know you know uh, like distress signals and sim- which now come in form of like some symptoms you know whether it is you can't sleep you can't eat very well your mood is off mm. um so in lima's term that's how i would i would describe trauma do, do you think there's an adult that exists in 2022 who only has one trauma no no mm-hmm. so i think also there is no. the sense of there are so many There's levels. Ev- yes, there are so many experiences in the past yeah. that are causing traumas, and then compile them together. They are causing you to respond and act and behave in a certain, in certain way. Ways. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. Uh, and I think for me to add on what you've just said yeah. is, it's. Uh, I, I think it also associates, or probably, it gives you some sense of emotional pain when either that subject, that topic, that occurrence mm-hmm. is brought to. It brought yes, to light. Yes, it's it's brought yes, brought to light. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, for yeah. example, the common example, of course, uh, <laughs> we were our exes. So, if you had a traumatic experience with you, why are you laughing, Edgar? Why are I'm sorry, you I'm laughing? Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, I yeah, apologize, it's it's, it's a common one. So, uh-huh. uh, our exes, and then I think so many of us have s- some negative connotation that comes with our excess there is that and then there is also i think there's workspaces mm. yeah toxic yes, workspaces, workspaces yeah. and all that mm. so i think now um daisy can tell us what do you what yeah, is trauma what is trauma to you mm-hmm. to um me? yeah maybe you could you could say how do you define <laughs> trauma medical before you became a psychologist mm-hmm. um did you come across the word trauma and mm. why did you become a psychologist now and then why did you become a psychologist no, you can start with why did you become a psychologist mm-hmm. why did i become a psychologist yeah. huh? um i think um the kenyan system really leaves us leaves us out to fate mm-hmm. yes. so um i was left out to fate mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, i started psychology not because i wanted it mm-hmm. but uh, the more i studied the more i interacted with my peers and lecturers i learned yeah. actually love it yeah. and i've learned to love it and yeah. uh, embrace it mm-hmm. um my study of it has helped me to deal with the issues that also affect me the day-to-day yeah. struggles my day-to-day right. struggles yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. so f- uh, f- uh talking about uh psychologist um i've i started a course uh, i want to be a trauma recovery coach mm. and the main reason why i was inspired to go that route mm. is there are so many people for example even bikers mm. there are bikers who go through very fatal accidents mm. and they don't recover mm-hmm. leave alone bikers there are normal monainchi who are just traveling from point a to point b mm. maybe the car to pull so they uh, they they are involved in a very bad accident mm-hmm. that leaves them traumatized for the rest of their life mm. so those are the people probably i would really want to work with like because for me i'm a huge believer mm-hmm. of even if a quarter of the world's population would heal from their trauma mm. the world would be a sweet place to be mm-hmm. yeah. i like that cuz um unhealed trauma yes. is a, is transferred trauma mm. and um i would explain trauma as an emotional reaction mm-hmm. after a frightening event so um mm. th- when you're in a in a traumatic event or rather mm. a frightening event to you 
Mm-hmm. Um, you get into fight, flight, or freeze mode. Mm-hmm. Um, fight to mean you you try and defend yourself by fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, flight is trying to escape, mm-hmm. and freeze is uh, the state where you can't you feel helpless. Mm-hmm. So um, trauma occurs after a traumatic event, and it's an emotional reaction. Atam <laughs> toki Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Said that you freeze, mm-hmm. you fight oh. back, mm-hmm. or you run. Mm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it makes sense. There's a storm too, and then over a period of time, they become so scared of walking in the dark. Mm. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Okay. I'm gonna watch two and I'll go and trigger something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good. So now, if I was to ask you, what, what, what forms? with that explanation that she's given mm. what do you think are the different forms trauma can take i don't understand that question <laughs> <laughs> are you saying that on purpose <laughs> 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 the different types of trauma is basically what I'm, uh, in your like in your view uh, the different types different. of trauma uh different types of trauma i don't know man I think uh this this episode I <laughs> I decided to just come mm. and learn on the job. <laughs> <laughs> you said to show if, up. If, if you have if you have a psychology guest you just come mm-hmm. and learn on the job. So mm-hmm. what are the types of traumas? <laughs> okay. What are the different types of trauma? Uh-huh. Yes, do, do you, you want to start top of my head let's yeah. see. Uh War, I think war is one that I know I've come across. Um, sex abuse is another. Mm-hmm. Accident. Um, accident. So you see, you know, accidents yeah. like the one you had, yeah. and others. Um, growing up in an childhood trauma, home, which mm-hmm. could, like childhood trauma, which could come in form of maybe living in a in a very violent home. Mm. You know, either your parents are violent or one parent is violent. There's a lot of domestic violence mm-hmm. involved there. There also could be um, the violent acts could also be uh, Im- Im- imposed on the child as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, traumatic, let's say. Ah, um, women who uh, miscarry, mm-hmm. um, or uh, th- it's called what? Ep- ep- there's another word for the the other pregnancies. Ectopic mm-hmm. pregnancies. Mm-hmm. Ectopic What's pregnancies. That? Hey, hey. Are you saying <laughs> hey because of the chicken? I'll get to the definition. <laughs> <laughs> But ectopic pregnancies, uh, top of my head, that's what I can think of now. The others will mm-hmm. come as we continue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where would you place Kushtuam to? That would probably be in terms of like. I guess the severity of uh-huh. of of you know uh, trauma because mm-hmm. I guess trauma also has levels mm-hmm. yeah I may not have studied I think mm-hmm. it has mm-hmm. it has levels you know there's mild uh, acute. some acute mm-hmm. and then severe yes mild acute severe uh-huh. yeah so it just depends on and then also is it kustua of one time is it kustua of several times mm-hmm. are you are you kustua in uh, are you using objects noises mm. uh, it, there's a lot there's context to it yeah also it depends on who you're storing could <laughs> it could be a child uh-huh. Uh-huh. who will now carry that as as trauma because as childhood trauma because now their brains are not fully developed they take they don't know how to process emotions mm. so when is the right time to to scare a kid because i've got one coming <laughs> yes from june I'll be, I'll, be, I'll, i'll be i'll be a dad so i want to know and mm-hmm. I, and all the time i keep playing in my mind all these crazy things i want to do with my my child mm. I, i feel like i'll be the one parent who will always mm-hmm. cross the boundaries and mm-hmm. i don't know first you make sure the child feels safe and secure because mm. you can differentiate when mm. it's with love the storing with love that is playful oh, and so if it's playful it's okay scare. yeah ah I see okay for cool. as long as the child feels safe and ah, protected okay mm-hmm. cool. Cool. Uh, so 
Why would you want to scare a child? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still there. Why? Like, why? <laughs> just have fun. You know, uh, let the kid... Let you the can kid. have fun in other ways, no? No, you can also have fun by scaring the kid. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you looking to achieve? I don't know. I just want to... Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a small... Uh, it's a small human. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh-huh. it's, it's as a result of my... My actions and activity. So I want to know how it responds to that. Like I just, out of, it's like an, it, um, I think. They're how, there because of you, yeah? Yeah, and I think for me it would be like uh, being in a laboratory just doing experiments. You just want to to see how. You to experiment with your child. I don't anyway. know. I don't Let's know. take a breakfast. Let me, let me. <laughs> Let's take a breakfast. <laughs> we'll talk about this oh, afterwards. Well, I, I hope people won't sue me for this. <laughs> this is the Naked Ego Podcast. Mm-hmm. And we'll be right back. Uh, today's episode has been brought to you by our partner here at Istik Bal mm-hmm. Home Furniture. Welcome back to the Naked Ego Podcast. And uh, we were talking about uh, types of trauma. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. Can we call you doctor? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Yes. Dr. Daisy. Uh-huh. So you can uh, you can tell us about the types of traumas. Uh-huh. So yeah. um, there are types of traumas. Mm-hmm. There's acute trauma. Um, What's acute trauma? So acute trauma happens when you have been through a single traumatic event. Mm-hmm. Ah, mm-hmm. like level one. Like level one. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then there's chronic, chronic, chronic. trauma. Uh-huh. Yeah. This happens when you have been in a prolonged like in pro- series of prolonged traumatic events mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so prolonged like how long um i would say i, w- I wouldn't measure yeah. um because we, we are made differently emotionally ah, i see what so you mean so what but you can take yeah. is not what another person can yeah, take but uh-huh. you've been there for, for quite long, some, for some time, time. Yeah. yeah yeah okay mm-hmm. keep going and then there's complex. Uh-huh. So yeah. this happens when there is multiple traumatic events. So uh-huh. this happens today, tomorrow it's a different thing, multiple uh-huh. times. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. I'm, in, I'm, in an, uh, I'm in an abusive, an abusive relationship. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The next day I'm involved in an accident. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm in my workspaces. My boss is also abusive to me. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I see, mm-hmm. keep going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then there's um, post-traumatic stress disorder. That one I know. <laughs> yes. yeah. PTSD. Yes. Uh-huh. What, yes. Do you know? what do you know? Uh, about I, 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 uh, what do you know know about PTSD? What I know about PTSD is uh, is uh, an you kind of you feel that experience of trauma if you you are about to face something mm-hmm. similar to what happened in the past. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like for me, uh, I lost my accident when I was moving at a very high speed. You lost it your leg. Motor- mm-hmm. You lost your leg. What did I say? You lost your accident. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how do you lose an accident? <laughs> you, yeah, lost, I lost my you lost leg. your leg <laughs> lost my while leg. riding your bike at thanks a high to, speed. Yeah, thanks, uh-huh. thanks to having a co-host. <laughs> yeah, I lost my leg yeah. uh, while moving at a very high speed on a motorcycle. Mm-hmm. So I remember uh, a friend of mine came to pick me up. Mm-hmm. in the hospital mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then this this guy i don't know what he was smoking this guy decided to take me to the bypass uh, then it's a uh, is it northern southern southern, southern bypass, southern bypass, southern bypass yeah. from kikuyu to karen mm-hmm. yes and he was here uh, we were in a subaru and he decided to just speed mm. ah yeah okay yeah so we were speeding and i think i was just breaking and shaking and he didn't see and i didn't want to tell him because Mm. Uh, I really didn't know how to express that to express mm. okay. that side of me because now for him mm-hmm. he kind of thought I'm still the old bill that we've been hanging out mm. moving in yes mm-hmm. so every time we would slow down mm-hmm. I would feel like we are we are going to crash mm-hmm. yes and then ah. it would make me sweat I would shake and all that mm-hmm. by the time we were getting home I was sweaty mm-hmm. he even asked me why are you sweating I'm like I think it's meds he so didn't know. He didn't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is immediately you left the hospital. Yes. The the very day he came to pick me up in the hospital. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And 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 now I, and also uh, it's it's not me shaming him. 
no, 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 he I get didn't you. know. I get you. He didn't know. He yeah, didn't yeah. know. And you also yeah. didn't know how yeah. to tell him. He didn't know. And also, I didn't know how to uh, to explain the whole situation. I even didn't know what it was. Mm, mm, yes. Mm, For me, mm. I didn't know what it was. Yeah, you I just knew feeling... about it later. Mm. Like there's something called post-traumatic stress Just disorder. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Keep mm-hmm. going. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I want to ask, how do you feel talking about that? About uh, mm-hmm. my accident? Yeah. Uh, then versus now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Give uh, those two scenarios. Th- th- then, then, then being... Like when it had maybe a few weeks or months after it had happened uh-huh. versus today. Um, I think for me, my accident has never been an issue for me. I think, mm. oh. yeah, my accident has never been, I, I moved on from my accident, I feel like hours or days later. And mm. I have never felt like it has been heavy for me to talk about. Oh. What what has been a struggle for me was yeah. the result of the accident. Which was? Mm. Yeah, now being broke. Uh, ah, getting okay. depressed. Okay. Okay. You get it? Okay. Okay. Losing my job. Right. Losing friends. Right. You get it? Uh, losing all your businesses. Uh, losing the financial freedom that you had in the past. Mm. Those are things that uh, I really struggled with. But talking about my accident, uh, you can ask me anything about it. I just feel like it's... I feel like I was in a party. Now you, you are asking me about that party. Mm. Like it's mm. never been a struggle for me to talk about it. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I think also uh, growing up, my, uh, um, my, folk, my dad. Yeah. My dad was very good at teaching us in terms of uh, compartmentalizing things, uh, things that you go through. Mm. Like for example, if something is very permanent... Mm. You've got no choice. You just have mm. to move on. Mm. Yes. Mm. Like I remember the times where I would really fight a lot with my my sister. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then my dad would tell me, you know what? It's it she's your sister. You can't mm-hmm. change her. Mm-hmm. You get it. Mm-hmm. But you can teach yourself to coexist with her. Mm-hmm. It's a permanent thing in mm-hmm. that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you That's work right. on yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. As as opposed to you trying to expect her to fix herself. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I think for me, yeah. So we can continue the after post-traumatic stress disorder. I was explaining what post-traumatic stress disorder is. Yeah. Um, so this uh, this happens when you have already been through through trauma. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you've been in it for a while. Yes. And now it's extended. So this is when uh. now these these symptoms come back in form of flashbacks, nightmares. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so that's when you are experiencing yeah. post traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. For me, I think where I'll come into this conversation is from the PTSD part. Yeah, mm. um, I've had incidences where, like, I've had many traumatic experiences mm-hmm. growing up since I was a child. Mm. Yeah, and it was just centered around the home I grew up in, mm. and there's so many things I witnessed in that home mm. that were never. They went unaddressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't looked out for. Mm-hmm. I was never protected from them. I was at I was more or less at the front line of these things. Mm-hmm. So you witness so many things. And and I mean, you know the thing I think the interesting thing about how we were created is that even if you don't know something is bad, wrong, uh, or let's say negative, your body will will have some sensations Mm -hmm. Uh running through it Mm -hmm. so i remember i used to i used to go through so many thoughts and emotions and bodily sensations that Mm -hmm. i never understood but they were very uncomfortable Mm -hmm. yeah they were Mm -hmm. very uncomfortable so these were incidences that i started witnessing when i was 10 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they went on for i mean way over double that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so that's way that's 20 years up Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, at some point, yeah, they sort of mellowed out down a bit, um, but then they got worse again. Mm-hmm. And now the PTSD part mm-hmm. is where I now like I can chip in and say mm-hmm. I've gone through flashbacks mm-hmm. of several incidences, mm-hmm. several of those incidences that happened. Do you mind painting a picture of what example of one of the incidents? Um, okay, so like. My folks, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My folks, um, they they used to they used to argue a lot, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and in their arguing, mm-hmm. 
sometimes a lot of the time you i was witness to it mm. first hand mm. mm. those either that or i would be given a playback mm. so last ah. night me and your dad argued mm-hmm. also your mom would tell you so that. my mom would tell ah, me I see mm-hmm. what you and mean. she would this is a thing that she re- did repeatedly mm. so my, and now on my dad's side my dad never used to come and tell us what had happened between him and my mom mm. mm-hmm. but he'd project yeah so my dad would be really angry yeah so most a lot of the time he'd just be upset over anything and anything. everything yeah mm. and mm. he was that guy who used to say ah your daddy vile ye ni mkali ah ye ni mkali sana but that ukali created a lot of fear mm. in me of him yeah i feared my dad growing up like i remember i think i told him this in 2019 mm. as the first time i think he had me say it mm. that you know growing up because of what happened mm-hmm. i feared you and i feel like it's a big number of men uh young men and women who went through that like yeah fear was such an instrumental tool that was yeah. used in the past it was also used to just dis- like it's used to discipline it's used to correct yeah. um what our parents term as bad behavior yes. mm-hmm. so rather than them explaining and saying mm. you know daisy when you did this this mm. is not right mm. yes. the reason why i say it's not right is mm. because this 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 and there's a consequence for that mm. yeah. so when i tell you that i'm now going to punish you by telling you to go you know on a time out or I'll take away your gadgets mm. or you will not be able to play outside with your friends mm. it's just because you did this thing rather than me seeing what you've done as your parent that I yeah. feel is wrong and then mm. I come shout and scream and every time you do or say something I consider bad or wrong mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I shout I scream I shout I scream mm. so you'd find the post traumatic part of it that could come along is mm-hmm. you could be in a a very a, a, an environment that is outside your home mm-hmm. yeah. you're dealing with none none of your family members mm-hmm. yeah so it could be a colleague for example mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and something has happened in the workplace that has got them really upset mm-hmm. and then they come in the shot and scream at you ah, mm-hmm. you will fight mm-hmm. freeze mm-hmm. or uh, it's Fa- uh, f- fight, fight flight, flight, flight or, or freeze, freeze. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah? yeah so you could fight back mm-hmm you could flee the scene you could just run away from that situation yeah. or you could literally just freeze take all take everything in and yeah. not and not do anything not say anything mm. yeah. you know mm-hmm. so that's now how a post traumatic stress, stress disorder, disorder can show mm. and for me it used to happen a lot of the time because mm-hmm. for me it was a magnitude of things mm-hmm. it was when dad used to shout mm-hmm. it was when my mom used to shout mm-hmm. it was when i kept being told about several things that were happening at home all the time mm-hmm. then uh it affected my sleep mm-hmm. it affected my eating mm-hmm. um someone would say certain words mm-hmm. that used to be said in our house all the time nice. mm-hmm. and when they say them yeah I, i was very what they call um i was too aware of so another mm-hmm. thing of post traumatic stress disorder mm-hmm. for me i'm very aware of my surroundings mm-hmm. all the time yeah mm-hmm. so sometimes my friends would tell me like edgar relax Mm. you you like you wandering too much mm. yeah just sit here let's look at each other let's be in the people. moment be in the mm. moment yeah. so i used to struggle i used to struggle with that a lot so yeah growing up it was it was difficult it was difficult mm. um because my, my my folks are very complex mm-hmm. people at least then now i understand them mm. um but the big 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 issue that caused all this was just they mm. had their own stuff from, from when they me. were growing up yeah. and then they met as a couple mm. they got married they got kids yeah. mm-hmm. and then as they were trying to do life with children mm-hmm. as they are doing work yes. mm-hmm. um so many things come up mm-hmm. you know things that were unaddressed mm-hmm. start showing up and yeah. since there's no way of communicating about yeah. them yeah and, and and also as you talk about that there are so many people out there who uh have never entertained the thought that probably their parents didn't know how to deal with stress better Mm. Yes, yeah like uh, yeah. their parents would dis, uh, displace uh their parents would uh, have their own fears their own anxiety their own uh, concern like we all struggle yeah mm. so yeah. our parents also went through that mm. i i also feel like my folks went through a great deal of that yeah mm. and uh they never had probably healthy ways that they could deal with so they didn't know better Mm-hmm. Yes. They didn't know any better. Didn't yes. And I think th- it's mm-hmm. something that keep comes it keeps coming up in conversations. Mm-hmm. Um 
you know your parents didn't know any better your parents are human mm. and and i get it mm. i get it but for someone like me i'll just speak for myself yeah. mm. um <laughs> when people say that mm. i find it invalidating mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sorry invalidating invalidating mm-hmm. it's Meaning? like you you are trying to okay mm-hmm. rationally mm-hmm. it makes sense yes. you you do you do what you do with what you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right or wrong. Right or wrong can be the can be a debate for another day. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. But with what you know, yeah. you do. Mm-hmm. Things you say things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now like in our household, mm-hmm. for us it was not one isolated incident. Mm-hmm. It was several incidents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um s- there were moments where I tried to verbalize and express how those incidences made me feel. Like mm-hmm. the impact. Mm-hmm. You know? but I was, it was still not met with i hear what you're saying i understand what you're saying mm. i apologize mm. you know i when we were growing up you know these are the things that used to happen there's mm. no explanation it mm. was i'm your parent mm-hmm. i've told you, you need to and I've, and you just need to listen mm-hmm. it's a command mm-hmm. um there's no maybe situations where like my folks went and did their own reflection after that conversation then came back and said Edgar you know I thought about what you said last mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. and I I I recognize that I acknowledge that okay I see what you're saying maybe I might have hurt you mm-hmm. and even if I didn't do it intentionally yeah. I I recognize that I hurt you and mm-hmm. I apologize mm-hmm. so a lot of us in our generation are finding out that our f- folks parented us with what they knew yes mm-hmm. what you know so it was and i find a lot of it is transparency mm-hmm. from our grandparents and from, from the guys trauma. before mm-hmm. so all of these things went unaddressed but they were always transferred mm-hmm. yeah so when it gets to now me who's coming to listen talk to daisy my friend and i'm mm-hmm. telling her that no this happened this has been happening in my <coughs> house then daisy's response is not even i'm sorry like i understand what you're going through. i know it's I, i know it must be tough it's But you know your folks are human man Edgar they they just did they, they didn't know any better I, I get so for me that's mm-hmm. invalidating yeah. because mm-hmm. you're not acknowledging mm-hmm. yeah you you are speaking like someone who has been in therapy <laughs> I have <laughs> yeah. I have been in therapy and mm-hmm. then also um I, why I speak the way I speak is because of first hand mm-hmm. experience mm-hmm. and then now I'm also in the space of being a uh, an advocate mm-hmm. as well uh and purely just based on what I've experienced mm-hmm. and um I've invited people to talk about their experiences as well mm. so yeah so I find it invalidating and then that annoys me mm-hmm. and then I'm just like you know what <sighs> I don't think I need to talk to Daisy anymore I'm mm-hmm. done mm-hmm. cancelled and and also as a, a part uh, even if uh, your parents are human and your parents did certain things when you are growing up there's something called consequences consequences mm-hmm. will always be there that you can't take away can't no matter whether they did it out of love uh, out of care they didn't know better yeah. consequences will always be there mm-hmm. and everyone has to face the yes, thing like you can't pick and choose face. yes mm-hmm. yes so th- there's this uh, when you are talking about childhood trauma it's mm-hmm. also a type of trauma yeah. uh-huh. um the child in you never dies the child remains yeah. The child mm. always remains. So, yeah. if you went through trauma as a child, chances are when you are in triggering situation, mm. this child comes come out. out. She comes mm. out. So, in this case, um probably you are you felt afraid when you were young. So, mm. when you are in an in a triggering situation that will remind you of that, mm. chances are you will be afraid. Yeah. Huh. Reasoning as a grown up will be rationally um I'm not supposed to be feeling this way, mm. but this child is still there I'm and still she's there. still scared uh-huh. yeah. mm. there's uh <laughs> there's what there's a book of s- I, i i i came across called uh adult children of emotionally abusive parents mm. and it it i just read a bit uh, like a, a few highlights and it's mm-hmm. it's something of literally you could be talking to a 60 year old mm. mm. but in certain situations the child in them comes out mm-hmm. Like you may confront them about something mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but subconsciously it's a thing that reminds them of something from the past when they were a kid mm-hmm. you know so it could be when they were growing up mm-hmm. they were not able to express themselves mm-hmm. in their home mm-hmm. because it was frowned upon mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and then now you're let's say having a conversation like this yeah mm-hmm. yeah and 
we're talking, we're talking, we're talking, and this person really feels like, I, but I'm not being given a chance to speak. Mm. So you'll find them doing certain things or saying something, like to sort of be like, no, even me, I need to be heard. Mm. So they'll, they'll, they'll find a way to command that attention and get oh, the control, shit. you know? So, mm. yeah, adult, adult, I mean, children in adults exist. Mm-hmm. Yes, I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh, um, uh, that that's all. Uh, those are all the yeah. types. Yes. And then you're also talking about uh, f- uh, fight, mm-hmm. flight, and flee. freeze. Mm-hmm. Freeze. Mm-hmm. Freeze. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you wanna break that down a little bit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, normally the brain is designed to protect us. So yeah. when you are in a traumatic event, um, the brain shuts down. For yeah. a moment. Can I can I interrupt you? Mm-hmm. Is it true that your a brain can tell you lies just to protect you? Yes. Yeah. Okay, continue. <laughs> no, I just wanted people to hear that. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Okay. There are people okay. who say, ah, oh, I'm feeling my gut. I think people, um, there's that situation, my gut feeling, oh, this is what I feel. People mm. always validate a lot of what they feel in the moment. Mm. Uh, for me, sometimes I encourage people to question their feelings and their emotions. And mm-hmm. Yeah, most of the time, like okay, I'm feeling, I'm feeling hungry. Okay, mm-hmm. so are you mm. feeling hungry, or you've just seen somebody Something. eating somewhere? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and all that. Is it a perceived is hunger, it, is or is it, it actual is it hunger? Really hunger? Uh, is it really hunger? All right, go, keep going. Uh, that's the subconscious. Yeah. Um, okay, so the brain is designed to protect us, mm-hmm. and so when you're in a traumatic event, it shuts down, mm. and uh, that's why. W- um, there's the after effects, the emotional effect, because now you cannot pr- remember or process the trauma <laughs> completely because the brain shut down <laughs> in order to, to for you to focus to the danger, on the danger, yeah, and uh-huh. like defend yourself. Mm. So that's where flight, fight, or freeze comes, comes from. Oh. So it happens so when you're experiencing trauma or post-traumatic stress, yeah. um, your, your brain does not know how to identify a threatening event or an unthreatening event. So as anything small that is almost similar to what happened to you mm. could be a cause of you to be in fight, Flight, flight or freeze. freeze. That's why we experience trauma or post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm. 